Hi everybody, this is Nikki, and I am going to knock out one more video while I'm sitting here waiting for my sensor to be ready to restart. Um, this is no medical advice whatsoever, nothing official, just some thoughts, um, and specifically some thoughts on my Libre 2. Um, so I've been wearing the Libre 2 for a couple of months now, um, and in general, I am very fond of it. I really like it. It's a, it's a very solid sensor. Um, and I usually like when I do these kind of videos um, or the many moons ago when I was doing them, I usually like to bring numbers and, and kind of logs and everything else so you can look at actual numbers. Um, and I'm keeping the logs. I just have lost a lot of interest in doing those statistics, if that's what they were in the first place. Um, so I am working on a G6 comparison right now, and I will pull up the information I've kept on the L2, on the Libre 2, um, because I think it really is interesting, but I can talk very broadly about a few patterns I've seen and the differences between my um, my Libre 1 14 day and my Libre 2 14 day, um, because there are some real differences. Uh, the first couple things that I have noticed, and if I had to summarize how I felt about the Libre 2, um, at this time, I would say that the the number one difference, and unfortunately it's not a good one, um, is that my Libre 2 gives me a lot more errors. Um, my Libre, my first Libre never did. It was just, it was the only time I ever got the error, error was in the middle of exercise and it never failed. It was when I had had carbs in order to get my blood sugar to rise. Um, I had to remember to do this. Um, it was it would be when I had um, carbs in order to get my blood sugar to rise. So I had that big rise going into the exercise, and it didn't have to be a high blood sugar. It just had to be that that rising blood sugar, um, and then the exercise would make it turn directions, and there would be you know once out of every three sessions that that fast turnaround and then that fast blood sugar drop would be enough to lose the, the Libre. Um, and I would get an error message that would say, check back in 10 minutes. Um, another difference is when I checked back in 10 minutes without exception. And I, again, maybe one time or maybe twice, but pretty much without exception, um, that reading was available. So it took my Libre, so it took a big change in direction, a, and a sudden change in direction, a sudden drop, um, and then it took it 10 minutes to sort itself out and I had a reading again. Um, the Libre 2, it's every single exercise session and it is, and it, it, it's still with the same circumstances, but it just seems so much more sensitive than my old one. Um, and unfortunately, that 10 minutes is no longer 10 minutes. It can be 20 or 30 minutes so that there is no guarantee that when I swipe again in 10 minutes, I'm gonna have a reading um, as long as I'm still exercising and as long as my there's still fluctuation and everything else, um, the Libre just drops out for a while and, the, and my Guardian 6 continues to read. Um, so it's not just a general, it's not a problem with my body it's a problem with the Libre keeping up with it. So that's an interesting thing. Um, they're also, and I've, and I actually had my reader replaced. Um, Abbott said about charging, which was the next um, thing that I've noticed again, which is not the great one, um, is that my old Libre, I would charge it once in between that 10 and 14 days, I would have to put the Libre, I mean, I had to put the reader on the charger maybe once, not maybe once, guaranteed once every, every um, sensor. With my first reader, it was one to two days, and it was every one to two days I had to charge the reader. Um, so that was really frustrating because I just I hadn't had that experience with Libre before. Uh, when I called them to ask them, because I said I don't think this is okay, you know, maybe maybe it's a malfunctioning reader. They did agree to send me out a new one. Um, they did also say that every two to three days was acceptable. Um, so that's it's just, a, again, you know, you get into the habit. So it's, it is what it is, but it was a big difference between that and the, and the original Libre, or the Libre 1 and 14 day. Um, other things, my reader is just not, I feel like I'm bashing the Libre 2, but I did start it by saying I like it, um, and I do like it, and I would like to finish up with that because it is still a solid sensor. Um, but these are things that I've noticed between the two li Libres. Um, another thing is it just isn't the actual reader feel I feel like it's 
it's more sensitive, again, more less sensitive. Um, so I spend a lot of time going like this or I'm pushing the button or I'm trying to do the touch screen and it's not, it's not as simple as the old one used to be. So that one scanned perfectly um, and that's wonderful. But a lot of times, you know, I didn't touch anything and it went there. Um, and then I hit the debt and it doesn't clear. Um, a lot of times it'll tell me I have a low alarm or I have a high alarm and I'm trying to do the touch screen and it won't let me do it. So I have to push the button. It's little tiny things. Um, and I'm not complaining about the technology because I am grateful for it. And I really am grateful for, for the Libre because it is consistent, very consistent. Um, but there is just the little things that I've had to kind of get accustomed to that were not true with the old Libre. Um, and as far as accuracy, it's either dead on or it's not. Um, there are times that it is, and it's not as consistently inaccurate as what my old one was. My old Libre very consistently overshot my blood sugar. So my old Libre was not as good um, catching the lows, but it was really good showing that I was rising and I was going fast. So it was, and that's why there was some theory that it was probably better for type twos who weren't on, who weren't doing as much insulin as it was for type ones who really needed a good detection on the low end um, I loved the old one. I just, I, but I knew that that was the pattern. Um, this one, I haven't really been able to figure out the pattern yet. I figured out the pattern during exercise. It's going to give me a lot of errors. Um, and sometimes it's going to overshoot and it's going to show me a 250 when I'm actually a 180 and, you know, or something like that. Um, and sometimes it's going to consistently read 30 points below where I am. And I'm not really sure why, um, so I'm making it sound like it's a bad sensor. I do like my Libre too. It's just I'm having a harder time finding what its patterns are. And it feels like it's because its patterns aren't as clear as what they once were. Um, with that being said, it's on my arm because I rely on it. I like it. Um, and I hear the Libre 3 is out. I hear it's being used with the, with the Tandem X2 Sport. Um, and I am incredibly curious as to whether or not it or what I guess I guess what new benefits and problems and whatever it brings okay seven and a half minutes oh I got I'm gonna restart my front sensor okay so thanks for watching bye